Do you like going into the forest, finding some monsters, playing a magic flute, and turning them into cocoons? Then do I have a game for you. That's right, folks. Today we are taking a look at Jade Cocoon, the story of Tamamayu, which translated is Story of the Jade Cocoon. So why didn't they just call it Jade Cocoon? Or Story of the Jade Cocoon? Why this? And what's a Jade Cocoon? So this is an interesting game. Jade Cocoon released in 1998, and by those standards, it's all right. The story follows Levant, who is next in line to be the village's cocoon master, a job passed down from father to son. One day, a horde of demon bugs are unleashed from the forest and cause many people to begin to sleep to death. I can relate to that. I have that problem literally every Saturday morning. So everyone is sleeping to death, except for the people who aren't, like the blacksmith and the town shopkeeper and your arranged magic wife and her teacher in the arts of magic wifing. I mean, I don't really know who is asleep, but trust me, they are. So it's time for our hero to step up. So let's talk about our hero. Levant has one of the most generic average character designs in any Japanese role-playing game. I'm talking real top of the bell curve stuff here. He is also a silent protagonist, so forget about any kind of characterization or development. Most of the other characters aren't much better. The exception being your arranged wife who stands out with a little bit of characterization. But when everyone else has the personality of a cardboard cutout of paint drying, it's not that hard to stand out. So Levant steps up to save the day. You explore forests, picking up things like cool spears. And look, I picked up knowledge. I picked up the abstract concept of knowledge. That's gotta do something neat, right? No, it's just game tips. Anyway, you explore and capture monsters by weakening them and playing your magic flute. This turns them into cocoons. Yeah, we're just gonna roll with it, okay? So you take these cocoons back to your magic wife, who purifies them. Which is supposed to be incredibly painful, but she looks alright. Once that's done, you put up to three of them in your party to fight for you. Unlike Levant, who only gains XP by capturing monsters, monsters only gain XP by getting the final blow on a monster. No XP sharing in this game. That just sounds like Pokemon with extra steps! Each monster is typed after one or more of the four elements, which are very similar to Pokemon's type system, but less deep. There are four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. Fire is strong against air, air is strong against earth, earth is strong against water, and you probably already guessed this, but water is strong against fire. But I'm not done yet! You can also take the purified cocoons, spin them into silk, and sell them to the town store for money, which somehow feels wrong? I'm not sure why. I know I'm not playing Pokemon, but it feels like I'm butchering a Pikachu and selling the meat to a store. Here's a tombstone for that childhood I just killed for you. There's also a fairly deep merging system that lets you combine monsters, making them stronger and possibly adding additional elements. It's an interesting system that's held back by the limited number of elements they had. Merging correctly allows you to build a party much more powerful than anything you could have caught. I can imagine this system was really cool in 1998, but at this point, I've seen almost the same thing on about 100 different phone games, so I'm not as impressed. The combat in this game is alright. Just alright. You fight with Levant, or one of your three monsters strategically switching monsters to gain type advantages against opponents. And then you kill them to level up or catch them for money or merge fodder. And then you do it again, and again, and again, and again. It's fun enough, but after a while, you realize there isn't much here beyond the surface. I really, really dislike that you can only have one creature out at a time, especially since the game allows you to be attacked by multiple enemies at once. I would have preferred it if you managed Levant and your monsters more like a traditional JRPG party. Jade Cocoon is also on the shorter end for JRPGs, with only about 15 hours of gameplay, and that's heavily padded out by grinding for money, levels, or monsters. There isn't much difficulty to the game aside from grinding up monsters for boss fights. The graphics aren't really next level, but I mean it is a PS1 game. And in PS1 JRPG tradition, the overworld has tons of pretty pre-rendered backgrounds. I mean, are they as good as Final Fantasy VII's backgrounds? No, but they're still good. It also has FMV cutscenes, but they're only alright. Nowhere near as good as Final Fantasy IX's, although Final Fantasy IX did release a full two years later, so it might not be fair to compare them, but I'm not one to let a little thing like fairness stop me from praising Final Fantasy IX at another game's expense. Let's talk about the voice acting really quick. 
Every line of dialogue in this game is voice acted, which is ambitious. A bit too ambitious. The voice acting's awful. Almost none of the characters sound like their voice matches their character, and everything has this echoey quality to it. Like they just got a whole bunch of voice actors, locked them in an abandoned warehouse, and wouldn't let them leave till they recorded all their lines. A for effort, but if you thought that addition was worth the effort, then you probably think effort spelt with an A too. Well, there you have it, Jade Cocoon. It's interesting enough, but if you're jonesing for a JRPG, you're likely better served elsewhere. But if you really just like games where you capture monsters and make them fight to death and you can't get enough of them, then this is for you. Hey, I hope you liked that video. If you did, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, click that dingly bell so you can get notified of every time I upload a video. Have a good one.